Hello, and welcome to the September 2024 edition of the U.S. Energy Insights. I am your host, Pamela Munger, and I'll be looking at the latest trends and market conditions within U.S. and global energy and sharing actionable insights powered by Vortex's trucking analytics. In this insight, we will cover crude inventories and exports, a TMX update, super tanker cleanups, and look at the new refinery start impact with a focus on Dengote. Let's start by looking at global onshore crude inventories, excluding China. Now, how are stocks getting depleted with US and other locations overall growing their exports? If we look and focus on the right-hand side chart, we can see that in reality, there's a consistent and deep decline in seaborne exports especially out of the Middle East and wider Europe. It's pretty striking that the market doesn't realize how much exports have gone down and the declines are underpinned by Middle East Gulf, especially OPEC plus cuts and new refinery startups. Now the Gulf of Mexico has slowed down as well. Canadian exports have rerouted via the TMX pipeline. The light green bars include Libya, which you can see this is the key aspect that turns the red line into negative territory. We will see how long the situation goes on. But at least from a seaborne perspective, the supply side is looking as if there could be some upside in the latter part of Q4, especially after refinery maintenance season ends. Now, if we look at US seaborne crude exports in September, we have seen some recovery in exports, although we will likely not reach the levels we had seen in June and July. And in the context of the Libyan outage, the lack of exports available has forced their top importers to look elsewhere for resupply. Now the right-hand side chart shows top European buyers of Libyan crude. The chart shows the light sweet crude into these top five, which include Italy, Spain, France and Greece and the UK. They are looking towards US, Algeria and Norway to resupply the shortfall from the Libyan outage. One of the questions we have heard discussed is what the US elections may mean for sanctions and will it add much supply to the market? Now, sanctions have not been meant to raise the crude price. They have certainly been made to dent profits and make it more difficult for these countries to find buyers. And to some extent, this has happened. Iran is an open question. Iranian officials plan to increase supply and say they have more production, but exports have been stagnant for around two years now. Inventories have been drawn down, however. Now, the Chinese refining sector is under massive pressure economically. The only crude that is really discounted is Iranian crude. And vessel-specific sanctions don't really challenge the Iranians because they have their own fleet. Now, international companies are a bit compliant regarding sanctions on Iran, but the teapot sector in China is used to claim discounted Iranian barrels. China demand for Iranian barrels is good, and we don't expect there to be a big difference in sanctions. And if there are, we aren't sure it will change flows very much. Now, moving to the TMS expansion, we can see that left-hand side chart, we have seen a big jump in crude exports out of Vancouver and a decline into Canadian exports out of the US Gulf Coast. Now, when the pipeline first started up, there was a lot of buying interest, but there are a lot of port constraints and vessel constraints. A big beneficiary of this has been Pad 5 refineries, as you can see in the dark blue columns. The red line represents what Reliance and Repsol are taking from US Gulf Coast. Now, this has helped divert some of the barrels from the US Gulf Coast but the freight cost to bring the barrel to Vancouver is not as efficient as the US Gulf Coast. And the reason we see the current movement is due to long-term contracts with Chinese buyers who have time charters. Now, what impact has this had on freight in terms of crude voyages? Well, we can see that crude voyages are mainly 
led by Aframaxes, and most of the barrels have stayed in PAD5. Now, when the pipeline first started, we had many questions on the impact of Aframaxes, and one of them was, are we going to see a big migration of Aframaxes into PAD5? We did see an increase in ballast Afras when the pipeline started up, but as you can see, the number has largely stagnated. Now, looking at supertanker cleanups, we can see this dynamic with LRs east-west via the Cape of Good Hope has decreased due to these cleanups. So that means that fewer LRs are ballasting back to the Middle East, which is reducing ballast mileage. And the MRs in the Gulf of Mexico have mainly been short haul, while MR long haul diesel Russia to Brazil has decreased and East Asia MRs have stayed short haul and interregional for the most part. Now, looking further into the super tanker cleanups, we can see that global clean product tanker freight mileage is falling, which is weighing on freight rates for all vessel classes. And one of the main contributors to high mileage was the transport inefficiencies and bottlenecks that we were seeing from the Panama Canal drought and the Red Sea diversions. Now, the Panama Canal Translits for clean tankers has largely recovered back to normal levels and LR transits via the Cape of Good Hope are falling. Now, earlier in the summer, that was largely because of reduced demand from the east-west middle distillate flows, but now it is due to displacement by the cleanup of VLCCs and Suez Maxes, which are loading at the Middle East and taking their predominantly diesel cargo all the way around the Cape of Good Hope into Europe. Now, this chart was prepared based on the feedback we have heard during innovation series, which looks at three main themes, overall demand disappointment and general high level of competitiveness in the refining sector and the impact of two new refineries, Dangote Refinery in Nigeria and the Dos Bocas Refinery in East Coast Mexico, which have yet to come online in a meaningful capacity, especially the secondary units. Now the left-hand side chart are exports from five ports related to these five new refineries. Jazan started several years ago, but not up to full capacity. Alzor, Dukum are up and running, and Dangote is only running about one third of its capacity and is in largely straight run mode uh, for now. Overall, we're talking about a refining capacity of around 2.2 million barrels per day. Now we've seen a lot of pressure on the product market this year. Um, indifferent to the other refinery startups, Dangote and Dos Bocas are targeting gasoline production. The lower line is combined gasoline production for these two refineries, which is around 500,000 barrels per day. And as you can see, none of these refineries are exporting gasoline. Now, if and when the Dangote and the Dos Bocas refinery starts up, it will be a completely different playing field in the Atlantic Basin, especially for gasoline. The biggest challenge with Dangote, managing the government and how crude and refined products are being priced, the more the refinery is not running, the more debt risk grows. However, we are seeing signs that gasoline production is starting up. So taking a closer look at the Dangote startup, we can see refined products exports have been for the year. And we can see that there's not been any fuel oil exports so far in September. This we think is an indication that the RFCC is likely starting up and producing gasoline. Now Argus estimates that Nigeria will import 445,000 barrels per day of crude for October, which is another indication that the refinery is ramping up and running. Now, new supplies are coming online at a time of declining markets. And here you can see wider European diesel arrivals by source. And the focus here is the horizontal red lines where diesel arrivals into the region have returned to highs of the Russian invasion from external supplies and internal supplies. Now, yes, the wider European market includes Turkey and North Africa, where we have seen deliveries of Russian diesel grow and stay fairly high. However, in addition to the Russian barrels, we can also see diesel coming in from the Middle East, largely recently due to the ability to move on the super tankers, as was previously mentioned. 
We can also see the U.S. diesel barrels arriving in the purple, which have only increased after U.S. Gulf Coast refiners openly cut runs due to the collapse in gasoline demand around mid-May. The point is, is that there's far too much diesel in the market and the real hit is only coming now, which will likely lead to refinery closures in Europe. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you join us in October for the next edition of the U.S. Energy Insights.